Now we're up to assembling the pistons to put them in. And you'll notice uh, some, quite often the pistons are directional. They need to be put in a certain way. These ones have these little lubrication uh, squirters that meet down into the, that little port there. You can see there, 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 there. So you've got one, two, three, four. Also the con rods are sometimes directional. These ones have the printing towards the front, which is towards me. You'll also notice that the piston has a little dot on it. And that little dot needs to be in the same position as well. And also, if the con rods have been machined, they'll bolt them together and they'll machine them, so it's always wise to to reassemble it the way it should be. You can see with these the the number stamp is towards us as well. So you've got one there, one there, and then number three, the little lubrication port there and there. And that'll be these little ports here. Those little fittings just bolt down into there. I've gone through and I've just marked one, two, three, four, and also these. I'll have to face it, oh, it doesn't actually matter. Um, I'll actually arrange them so number one, three, eight, nine, so one, two, three, four in number order just so there's some sort of uh, logic to it and we'll put in the the gudgeon pins we'll put them in the pistons and the pit they these actual pistons have a little circlet there that locates in that little groove now you'll notice these Sometimes you need to really give it a good flush. I've just got clean solvent there. You can see it's... I have already given them a bit of a wash in the... In the parts washer, the real dirty one. But these ones, these parts here, they have a little valve in there. So you want to make sure that that valve is not sticking as well. And you don't want to damage it either, and you can see that that valve just pushes through. See that? Or... Just want to flush it out as best as you can. And make sure that that valve's not sticking. See, so there's a bit of rubbish in there. I believe is just a cap on the end of it where the spring is for that valve. We'll just go through and wash those before we put them back together. Now what these little jiggers do they actually squirt oil in the bottom end of the piston. You'll see in the bottom end of the piston there'll be a, a port that's aligned with that squirter and it helps cool the bottom end of the piston because they are a pretty uh, solid sort of a thing so these things are actually an oil cooling jet you'll have your oil ring which is a bottom ring just pull that apart like that you'll notice there's a little white mark on it that's where the join is we'll carefully open that up like that You'll see that just locates in there. And you always want to have that located on the opposite end of that oil ring join. We just open it up enough so we can just get it over that piston. We put it into that groove. Slide it all back together. 
trying not to deform it in any way like that and now you've got to actually support the ring in the middle when you get your circlip pliers on there or we'll call them ring expansion pliers now if you just if you don't support that with your fingers you can't you risk breaking that ring and we just want to open it as little as we can while we're supporting that and we'll just maneuver that right over and we'll try and put the the join at the opposite end of where that ring is so I've just got to slide that around a little bit too many things going on at one time And that'll just pop over that ring like that. There we go. Oil rings in. And you'll notice that these rings are also tapered. And the taper, I'm not sure if you can see that. See how that top end there is tapered? The tapered end is going up. And again, pinching the middle part of it, or supporting it, we're just going to slide that over, opening it as little as we can. It's gone into the top groove. Just need to get it over into the middle groove. There you go. That's it. And finally, the top ring has also got a taper on it can you see that again the taper goes up towards the top of the piston there's actually a little little number there just showing that it's 50 oh, 0.5 oversize and there's a little stamp on it that's where the taper is, taper goes up Again, pinching the middle. Again, supporting the middle of the part of the ring. Opening the ring as little as we can. I should have got those other circlip pies. And that's popped in. There we go. Now there's a couple of different ways or different thoughts on how to align these openings on the rings. What I like to do is because the piston's working like this on that gudgeon pin, it's moving like that. So you don't want to have the join on this, this part of the, the piston. You want it over, over here where it's not actually moving like that. It should be just rotating like that going up and down that, that is exaggerating the movement of it so what I like to do is put one join here put the opposite join on the other ring over here and then put the, the lower join again opposite that one that way if you do have oil or compression it has to travel all the way around that ring before it goes through there it's just got to travel a lot further and given the time it takes to go up and down, you'll get better compression that way. The second line of thought is this. They like to put it 120 degrees out of alignment, probably because there are three sets of rings and, they're, oh, and you have 360 degrees in a full circle. So they sort of misalign it by 120. 20 degrees but I like to put them 180 degrees out now we've got the connecting rod there or the con rod and you'll notice when they when they machine these they machine that together like that you'll notice if you flip that around 180 degrees which sometimes you can do 
that that little join in there doesn't line up so what that would mean is that the the bearings wouldn't be held in the right position there'd be a little step there and it's it becomes a, a weak point so you've got to make sure that that's on the right way you can mark it if you like when you're doing it the gudgeon pin as well these these new connecting rods they've already got the bushes in there but you want to always confirm that that hole is lined up it's a lubricating hole just make sure it's put in properly uh, the gudgeon pin goes in nice and straight like so we can put the we'll put the bearings in first and what we do is we put one side in first and then you sort of sort of bend the bearing or flex it towards you know, so you're, you're crushing it or squashing it a bit just so it doesn't scrape on that that edge that sharp edge there and it shouldn't you shouldn't have any material scraped off there when you're putting it in there we go that's all good and the other one we do the same what you could do is you can align that bit first or whatever it doesn't matter and I'm flexing it with my thumb pushing my thumb down that way and just sliding it in and there you go it doesn't scrape any of that material off the back of the bearing so we've got the front of the piston pointing toward the arrows pointing to the front of the car we can oh, we're putting the numbers as well pushing towards the front of the car like so we can we probably should have put the circlips in first but doesn't matter we put that in there like that now with these circlips you'll also see that there's a, a rounded part of it and there's a square cut side you always want to have that square cut side on the side where the pressure is pushing up so you've got more surface area and a nice sharp edge stopping that circlip from popping out or whatever it could happen we'll pop that in like that and it's always a good idea to just roll that around a bit just to make sure that that circlip has located properly in the groove and I've got the sharp edge going towards the outside because that's where the, the force is going to be flip it over push that gudgeon pin in I probably should have put a bit of, little bit of oil in there first which I will do don't like to have these things running dry in again the other circlip want the sharp edge on the outside because that's that pin would be pushing on that way possibly if the rounded bit off would be there it could damage the groove in the piston so you want maximum surface area on that on that pressure side if that makes sense and again we just pop that in and we just make sure that that can move in the groove and it seats properly like that there we go all ready okay for reference because when once you push it in you can't really see properly in there but that's how it sat that's how that conrod was machined so what I can do 
and just mark which way it goes. There you go, I've just marked it with the liquid paper there. I was just out of camera there. Now we'll get that crank out of the way there. So you'll keep turning. No, no. that's the highest point. You want to have these two keep going. Just get them level. There you go. Now that means that that crankshaft journal is as far away from these so you don't want to scratch them or damage them just until you get the piston in. Bit of oil Don't go easy on the oil, it's always good to have more lube than less now we've got the, the arrow the front of the, the motor going that way. We're going to put the top ring there, the middle ring there, and the join of the oil ring over here. So we've got the rings lined up, ready to go. The joins sort of in line with the conrod or the gudgeon pin. You could probably, I suppose, if you want to put it halfway there or whatever, it doesn't really matter, I don't believe. We've got the position of the piston going forward. Now we've got to put the, uh, the ring compressor on and just put those rings into position so we can get it down that bore without damaging the rings. Now on your ring compressor you'll notice there's a, these little notches there. They actually go towards your motor there when you're putting it all on. Put a little bit of oil on there. Make sure that that's pointing the right way. Gently put that there. Now I'm pushing the ring compressor down. And you get it to the notch that's the tightest there. There's a little ratchet notch there. And we can get, you can either use aluminium or plastic. And holding the, spring com uh, the ring compressor down. We slowly tap that down. Sometimes this, the end of the ring compressor falls into that groove there, so you've got to just keep an eye on that. That's why it's actually got those little notches on the bottom end, so it tries not to fall into that, into the ball. And that should be in. Now we don't just push that piston straight down. We need to sort of um, guide it so you don't gouge out your crankshaft, your new crankshaft. So we flip over the motor, flip it around. And you get your assistant to just slowly tap, tap up that piston while you're guiding that in. Hang on a sec. Just put a bit more oil on here. Right, 
Oh, did I tap it up? Yeah, tap away. And I'm just trying, hang on, slowly. Yep, keep going. Bit more. A little bit more. And that's seeded. The other half of that conrod there. The oil on there. And remember, these are directional, so we've put a mark on it which way it was that uh, machined. I'm not going to talk it up yet. I'm just going to tighten it. Boom. And this is the last piston on there. The other ones have been torqued up. But it's a good idea now, just give the motor a bit of a spin. And it should all move nice and freely. Look at that. Now if you've done everything correct, you'll notice that the position of the little port for the oil cooler jet will all be aligned. Now those number one and number four are aligned. And if I spin that around, you'll see number two and number three are aligned. There we go. It's also a good idea to just double check your work as you going along. So now we'll talk up these main bearings and the your big end bearings. And we've got the specs there. You can see the connecting rod cap nut or your big end bearings. 27 to 29 newton metre plus 90 to 94 degrees. Here we go. We've got the oil coolers in, the jets. And it's also a good idea to just bend that little tube just so it's in the middle of that little port in the piston as well. It's spinning around nicely. It's all been torqued up now. We're ready to go to the next stage. Now my young bloke actually asks the question what this plate is used for. You've got the, the pickup for the oil tube over here and you've got this baffle plate. And it's actually not a bad question. I believe that they've got this designed because there's a big step in the sump on the four-wheel drive ones. And what happens, as, as this is all spinning around and throwing oil, it's probably hitting that shallow part of the sump and causing air pockets in there. The air pockets can affect the sucking action of the oil pump at the pickup. So the pickups at the, or the, the deeper parts at the rear here, and there's a shallow part here. So if anyone can enlighten me on the reason for these, I'd be very interested, but that's probably the only logical reason I could come up with. Now another little thing, on the strainer for the pickup for the oil pump, I noticed that this strainer was right up flush against that pipe. So what could happen, basically if that just that little piece there got blocked, that would basically block the whole flow of the engine oil. So what I've done, if I've, I've, I've got some uh, multi-grips and just squeezed that just to try and separate that screen as high as I could away from that pipe there. Even if it gets blocked here at the pickup, it's going to just be able to suck oil through all that using the whole surface area of that screen. We've got the rear main seal housing, We've got the old seal out. The seal actually has a step, uh, the housing has a step there so you've got to press it from the inside out and be aware that the little spring on the seal when you're tapping it in you want to just always just peel that 
lip back and just make sure that the spring's still in there. If you tap it out or lose it, there'll be nothing sort of to keep the tension on that rubber uh, of the seal on your crank. I've got the new seal in, confirm the, the little springs in there. And also you want to confirm that it's gone right up to that step. And you've got to check that right around. And you also want to put that seal in nice and evenly or you will do damage. You'll need a, a driver that's the correct size. Nice thin film of elastic on there. They don't have a gasket. And we're just going to let it harden a little bit. Now that cover's got guide pins on it so you don't have to worry about aligning this. And we just bolt it down talk it up. Make sure you also put a little bit of oil on that crankshaft and on the seal.